Zach is heartbroken, Fatima is heartbroken, and his raggedy ass homeboys are still in his house. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Vane, coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Zatima video. In this video, I am breaking down episode number six from season one of the BET Plus exclusive Sisters Universe spinoff, Zatima. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my Zatima or Sisters content. As you know, Sisters will be premiering next Wednesday for their season five. And then the following Thursday, we will get episodes seven and eight of Zatima. But this video, we are here to talk about episode number six, child. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, I typically will go through the episode in chronological order, but I can't really do that in this episode, y'all, because quite a bit happens, and I really want to just talk about the specific plot points in their totality, because in this episode, we are really shuffling back and forth between Fatima and Zach, who are both in very distraught emotional places right now for various reasons so zach was picking up a little bit on something that was in fatima's mood or in her mind um not really sure if she's still struggling with what happened with belinda the night before or for something else going on he picked it he picked up on this from their phone call and then you know when she arrives home um he's able to feel it on her but then his goofy ass homeboys decide to just inappropriately show him the photo of her and Ian and it's not that I don't want didn't want for them to show him the photo it's just how they actually did it so I really want to talk about like characters and their specific plot points all together versus like going back and forth because the, over the course of the episode we're really cutting back and forth between Zach and Fatima and what they're going through how they're responding to each other in various moments we really get to see how things escalate subtly which is very cool like I think that the way they did this episode is great but just for the purposes of me breaking this down and talking about it I want to pull everything together so like let's start with the homeboys right y'all know I don't like their asses I'm not gonna like their asses I don't even see a redemption art coming for either Nathan or Tony both of them are some raggedy ass Negroes and I pray that you know Nathan's wife leaves him and that Tony never finds a black woman to love him because you don't deserve y'all are disgusting you are miserable you are trifling you are everything that is wrong with us i said it i'm standing on it and i'm not going to argue with y'all's asses in the comment section so if you a black man and you identify with one of these two men and you your little feelings are hurt maybe erica ain't the one for you baby because i'm going to tell you that you trifling and that you're stupid and that you're miserable and that you did you need to be corrected at every chance i get there were so many points where they could have pulled up. Nathan gets like more disrespectful, exponentially disrespectful by the moment. And then when we arrive at episode six, it's all under the guise of he's drunk and he be drinking all the time. So now that he's belligerently drunk and now that he has disrespected Fatima and made little snot ass remarks about, yes, yeah, she want to be without you, this, that, and the third and Zach is ready to put them paws on you because you're doing a lot in his house with his woman in her house. Now you wanna say, Tony, show him, show him the photo, show him the photo. Like the goofy ass gump you are. I just, I don't know what behooves Zach to actually still keep these people in his life. I know they mentioned last episode that they have been friends since childhood, but guess what? Sometimes you gotta let people who have not grown go because they're not going to be for you the entire setup of how zach was shown the photo of ian and fatima did half of the work of putting him into this depressive sad state that we see him in at the top of this um episode because had tony brought his ass in didn't drop off them beer said hey zach can i talk to you for a second I don't know what's going on. I remember seeing the photo of her. We talked about how gorgeous she was. Those braids was popping, boppy boppy boop. I just came back from the liquor store and I think that I saw her. I want to show you this. I don't know the context of it. I'm going to go ahead and get Nathan up out of here because, you know, y'all could go, y'all are going to probably need to talk about this. That would have been completely different than the shit show that we were given. 
put on by clown number one and clown number two, Nathan and Tony. And Tony, no, you don't get no damn brownie points from trying to break up the fight and trying to calm Nathan down and finally getting Nathan to get in your damn car because you literally lit the fuse on this damn bomb, watched it blow up, and then you want to stand around and help to sweep up the ashes? Man, fuck you. And I mean that. For real, for real. Like, now we're really getting to the meat and potatoes of it because while I feel some type of way, y'all, to me, this is what it means to have, like, really great television that gets you really, really riled up or gets you emotionally involved. Like, I feel like I'm Zach's sister and I got to come and tell him, like, these niggas are not for you, bro. They're not for you. I'm going to keep saying this until I'm blue in the face. The moment that I learned this, I decided I was never going to let it go. You cannot be friends with people who want to be you. Zach's friends want to be him. So y'all cannot actually be friends. Let it go. Now, again, I want to talk about his friends and get that out the way before we go into everything else. Because of Zach's emotional state, brought on by how th this photo being shown, and then Tony going on to, ex after they get Nathan out the house, going on to explain what he saw, you know, in on one knee, them talking very closely, all of that, it just makes Zach spiral even more. And you could tell his heart is breaking in this moment. And this is where I'm gonna make a little, like a little footnote that we gonna circle back to later y'all because this is where it's gonna come down to like, has Zach actually changed? And when we have this conversation, these are the moments that y'all actually need to be looking to. Because old Zach would act out. And what the hell does Zach do in this episode? Act out. He ultimately makes it to this party that he said he wasn't going to go to with his homeboys and they are continuing, continuing the bullshit ass shucking and jiving, fake happy. They not even happy at this damn party. Like it's a telltale sign for me and I'm not judging you. If you like to, you know, you know, enjoy, indulge a bit, get your alcoholic beverage on, smoke you some weed, do whatever you got to do. Cool, cool, cool. I have no problem with that. It's not my, my forte. I might have a glass of wine here or there, but then even that it's like once every three months, because I have learned as I've gotten older, a lot of us are using substances to run from our lives, to run from ourselves, to hide from our thoughts. And that is all I saw from Zach's friends at this damn party. Nathan, you were already so drunk that you almost fought Zach in his damn house, had to be pushed out, and then you're still drinking at this damn party. Why? Oh, we know why. Because you hate your life, you hate your wife, you hate your kids, you hate your damn self to be truthful. You don't even hate all those people, you hate yourself. And I wish you would just say that with your whole chest because then maybe we can get you back to being an actual man. Being honest and accountable. How about that? Tony, you over here still kicking it with him knowing that your, your homeboy is dead ass wrong. That's another thing. I don't like how I see men like just let the shit that, they, that their homies do go as if it ain't wrong. So now y'all still sitting here kicking and throwing back shots like it's going out of style. But of, I mean, what else could I expect? These, these are two miserable ass Negroes around a bunch of beautiful women that your asses will never have a chance with. So let's go ahead and be clear. Dark lips and bald headed wonder. Y'all can't pull nobody in this damn club because guess what? You don't got no money either. You trash men and you don't have no money. So... Might as well go back to y'all PS5s if you ask me. Okay, let's not make it about that, Erica. Y'all, I really don't like these Negroes. I really don't. At the whole time at the party, they are also a part of the thing that's pushing Zach to like go back to what he used to do, to have fun, to turn up, to pull a girl, to go on a girl. Like, for why? Okay, let's like skip to the let's skip to the good part, right? Where y'all win, right? Y'all get Zach to cheat on Fatima. Y'all get Zach to spend up all his money on bullshit. Y'all get Zach to run after skeezers and hoes or whatever else y'all keep calling them because that's what y'all want him to do. Yeah, 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 it's all fun and good. So now what? You broke, you broke. Now Zach back to being broke. You miserable, you lonely. Now Zach back to being miserable and lonely. Is that really what the goal is? Can we like really understand what is the whole point of this? Because I don't. And again, throw these raggedy ass Negroes away. Moving on, because I spent way too much time on them to begin with. 
Zach. My heart goes out to him in this episode because you can really see his heart breaking seeing that photo. And it's almost like you can watch in his eyes like him feel like the last six weeks have been a lie. And then you can go back to previous episodes where he was talking to Bryce and he was like, yo, if you ever looked at somebody, you see somebody, see somebody, you can tell that that person was still on that person's mind. You can literally see all of that in Zach's um, facial expressions and how he's moving with his body. Like you literally can feel it is jumping off the screen as um, Tony is breaking down the whole situation. To me, what would have shown a change, Zach, is if he would have taken this information and went and asked Fatima straight up. But no, 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 because we do not actually have a change, Zach, y'all. I know y'all really want to have a change, Zach, so very bad, but we do not have a change, Zach, just yet. That don't mean he's not deserving of love. That don't mean he's not a cool character. He just ain't changed just yet. He decides to not speak on it, go and get in the shower, and then be passive aggressive about this information that he has tried to backdoor uh get Fatima to lie and I don't even understand what he was actually trying to do he was doing a lot trying to allude to the fact that he knew what was going on and he wanted Fatima to tell him what was going on but he didn't outright ask and this is where he started to lose me this is where I started to empathize less with Zach because Regardless of if it was right for Fatima to go and meet with Ian, regardless of if she should have called him and told him, hey, I'm going to go have coffee with Ian. Regardless of if as soon as she hit the door at the house, she should have told you, you felt like whatever she had going on is, this is what it is. Fatima has expertly handled your drama with Karen, your potential baby with Karen, your potential baby with Heather, she has dealt with her best friend being a woman of your past and then attempted to sleep with you. She has taken you in and made sure you stayed in chain breakers, let you use uh, a rental car to get back and forth because she messed up your bike. Like this girl has put in work when it comes to you. And the fact that you get some information that's disappointing, yes, heartbreaking, yes, and you don't give her the benefit of just asking her, or even if you don't ask her, telling her exactly how you feel. I saw this photo of you and Ian after we discussed that you would not go to dinner with him and this is hurting my feelings. You don't even give her that. And Fatima has given you infinite amounts of grace, infinite amounts of empathy, infinite amounts of understanding. Every single time something is thrown up in Fatima's face that comes from Zach or Zach's past, she turns the other cheek. And this Negro decided to get his sexy ass out the shower with an attitude and a passive aggressive ass rhetoric to spill her way as if she has not been putting in work for you as a man and the man that you want to be and the life that you want to have. She is 100% bought in and you couldn't even give her the benefit of the doubt to ask her a question? Nah. This is where you lose me. This is where you lose me, Zach, because Fatima has earned more respect than this. Fatima has earned the benefit of the doubt. Fatima has earned better, effective communication from you. She has not earned you deciding to regress back to whoever the hell you was, thotting and bopping, looking at girls, kikiing and doing whatever because you hurt and you don't know how to communicate your goddamn feelings. Grow the hell up. Because you running around here talking about some, yeah, you want a big boy business. You want a building and you want this and you want that. Meanwhile, you can't open your big boy ass mouth and say how you feel. Instead, you want to run to your goofy ass friends. They ain't a leader amongst the none of you. But all of y'all are leading each other off a damn cliff and straight to hell. Like, no, absolutely not. I don't agree with every single thing that Fatima has done thus far. I think that she has been putting herself out way too much and I get it. You got to invest when it comes to love, especially if this might be the one for you. But fuck that today, Zach, because this woman just had to relive the fact that she aborted a baby that she probably did not want to abort from a man who she thought was going to be in her life the rest of her life. And then that man also has cancer 12 hours after she just shot bullets at her best friend. Go to hell. You could come back, Zach. But right now, go to hell. I don't know how y'all feeling about it, but watching that, I was just like, 
completely annoyed with the fact that he couldn't give Fatima an ounce of what she has been giving him over the course of Forces Seasons of Sisters. How? The math ain't mathing, y'all. And you can go ahead and try to make it math in the comment section down below, but it ain't mathing. For me, at least. All right, so Fatima spends the rest of the night in the house. She calls Angela over because she needs to talk things out. Um, she expresses, like, what happened with Ian, and now she's mostly grappling with if she's going to actually call Ian's mama because Ian wants her to call his mom and talk to her. Ian's mama has always loved her, never liked the girl that he left her for, and all of that jazz. This is clearly just going to be an emotional moment that's going to be extended while Fatima continues to get closure. I do think that she's going to wind up calling um, Ian's mom. I don't think that Fatima actually wants Ian back, but I do think that she deserves this closure and it feels like she actually needs it. I think that she also might be looking for a way to interact with Ian in some way as he lives out the rest of his, you know, um, terminal cancer diagnosis because she ultimately doesn't want him to die regardless of how shitty he was to her. And I think that Zach is going to have to put his big boy panties on grow the hell up and allow her to have what she needs for this particular part of her life like Fatima said while she was talking to Ian in the last episode she thinks that him coming forward and like telling her all of this apologizing in a way that he did really letting her know that all the decisions that he made had nothing to do with her she was perfect for him at the moment and all of that is really going to help her heal and all of this that she's going through the processing that she's doing is also going to help her heal because it really kind of feels like Fatima got left by Ian and just pressed pause and then never really processed her feelings, never really dealt with it, became a boss ass bitch and, and, and put up a wall. But, some, but for her to actually move forward and have a really strong, healthy relationship and ultimately maybe a marriage with Zach, she's going to have to break that wall down fully, deal with the pain from the past so that she doesn't have additional triggers and things that she snapped back to simply because she never dealt with it before. Her being able to, to, to talk to Ian now and like go through the process of like thinking a lot of this stuff through, reflecting, feeling some of the hurt again, this is all ultimately going to be really great for her as a person and i'm gonna need zach to see that and i'm gonna need zach to grow the hell up and now on the other hand with zach and speaking about grow the hell up he decides after being passive aggressive with fatima in his damn bathroom putting on his damn clothes without a stitch of damn lotion so you big mad you so mad you leaving out of here ashy and with no wife beater on you just gonna throw this damn sweatshirt on over top of your bare ass wet ass chest zach grow up for real for, like, <laughs> I'm trying to have empathy for Zach in this episode, but the moment he started kicking too much attitudinal flavor Fatima's way, I was like, yeah, no. He decides to go to this party. He gets to this party. He's still trying to play new Zach, but then ultimately gives in after he runs into Deja outside and she talking about she dancing at this party, reveals that she's a private dancer, stripper little lady. And she looking how she looking, y'all, so I can't even hold you. But the fact that she brought you back into this party, You deserve whatever Fatima gonna have cooking for you, sir. Cause you know you did ass wrong. You know you did ass wrong sitting in this party, watching Deja dance and she directing this damn dance to you getting all sexy and sensual and all. And you just steady throwing back the shots. Shout out to Bryce coming, looking out for his homeboy. I'm gonna need Bryce to have a little bit more bass in his chest, a little bit more aggression, because when you got these black ass dudes as your homies, and then two of them are ignorant as hell, you're gonna have to be able to take it to the flow real quick to let them know that you ain't playing. Zach, bring your ass about this party. Nathan, shut your crusty ass, dry ass lips up. Tony, shut your no pussy getting ass up. Zach, let's go. I'm sorry, y'all. This this review is very vulgar because I am I really do have an attitude. I didn't write any of this out. I'm literally just speaking into the mic and telling y'all exactly how I feel because this episode just did something to me. I think it's cool that we get to see 
what this like old Zach really really looked like because for us we only got to saw we only got to see the like destitute part of Zach the down and out part but in this we get to see the player that actually really does love women and is doesn't have any issues pulling a woman on any given day so we do need the scenes of him at this party but also i want him to stand up like a man and face whatever consequences is coming to him once it's revealed spoiler alert by the end of the episode we're left with the cliffhanger of um of um Angela being sent a photo of Zach and Deja by Belinda and I'm just like how in the hell did she get this fucking photo girl mind your business but we're not gonna make this about Belinda there's too much stuff happening in this episode for me to go down the rabbit hole about Belinda do I think that Zach is really capable of cheating on Fatima I didn't before this episode but with him being hurt and not being able to express his pain and then watching him him at this party watching him interact with Deja watching him get drunk I'm like oh wow he is capable of doing it and it would just be another one of Zach's mistakes from the past that's still very much so present because he really hasn't dealt with his toxic mindset and problematic decision making wow and before we can even really focus on that what's happening with zach mentally what's happening with fatima mentally another little random ass negro pops up at zach's house and it turns out to be zach's brother it's given very much so fresh out of incarceration it's given very much so um you you are a threat you don't have a certain level of respect that you need i hate to see it even though i wanted to see his brother and i wanted to get further insight but his vibe is completely off he's very much so giving me the vibe of nathan and tony nathan's ass is the one who probably called him and gave him the address even though zach told him two episodes ago or last episode that he was going to call his brother he had yet to talk to him the brother don't even have zach's phone number so it's like y'all are literally menacing and bringing trouble into his life and at this point throw your hands up because it's no more like you need to be cussed out and clowned for how you look and how you get no ass you need to be beat i said what i said no i'm not arguing in the comment section zach's brother gotta go nathan gotta go tony gotta goddamn go and I'm going to take this one moment to talk about the little basketball player who was having a birthday party. I don't know if I was watching the episode too hard or not, y'all. But this Negro literally gets up there, has a speech about how this is his, is his, girl's, bir his girl's party, whether it's her birthday or not. He threw this party for his girl. His girl said she wanted strippers. And he was like, no, nah, because he thought that she wanted male strippers, but she actually wanted female strippers. And he literally says that she uses the N-word. And then everybody is just yucking it up. If somebody don't get this, this whatever professional coon up out of here, like, <laughs> Tyler Perry, I'm going to need you to infuse this series with some well-to-do black men with some sense because it's way too many black men running amok who have no goddamn sense at all and zach you are in danger i fear because you're surrounded by buffoons and coons and then you got bryce the only one with some damn sense who don't have a strong enough backbone just yet is bryce the realest nigga that zach knows is fatima that's a problem for me. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to go ahead and end the review here. Those are my thoughts. That's the breakdown. Let me know what y'all thought about the episode in the comment section down below. My heart is still going out for Fatima. And I'm really just thinking a lot about the emotional state that she's in. I've been there before. Um, with a lot of heavy sh just hitting you all at once it's not fun it's terrible to deal with i want to feel bad for zach but i also feel like he is doing what he has done in the past of taking a bad situation and making it worse with further bad decisions when he could just go to the damn lord or sit and write in a damn journal he wants to act a monkey fool and i can't really feel bad for that and then i told you how i felt about everybody else shout out to angela though she's doing a good job of showing up as a good friend in this episode so i appreciate you mama you are starting to you know get some brownie points back because we was ready to throw all of the team of friends away but you might can can stay it's your good sis you love to talk tv with again drop down in the comment section let me know what you think about this episode what you think about some of my thoughts around the episode 
hit that subscribe button if you're new here turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my other zatima videos and i'm gonna see you in the next one bye